So today I want to explain your last laboratory work. It is laboratory work number four from our second part uh, of mathematical programming. And today uh, you will get to know how to build uh, the transportation problem model and how we can define the best solution for this problem. So um, again, when we talk about transportation problem, we talk about the type of linear programming problem. And of course, if we talk about transportation, it means that we will talk about uh, the processes of uh, transporting uh, one goods uh, to from uh, supplier to consumer. And we can formulate the classical transport transportation problem uh, from two points of view, uh, in short and in detail. So when we talk about short, we can say that the total number of units produced at each source. So we talk about sources or suppliers who can produce some num uh, units uh, of goods and also we talk about the total number of units which is required at each destination so we talk about the destination like uh, consumers who will uh, get the sum of products from supplier from sources and also uh, of course we need to know the information about the cost of transportation so uh, of unit from each source to each destination and according to this short uh, explanation of transportation problem, we can uh, understand that uh, what is our objective function, what we want to find according to this transportation problem. We want to do all our transportation processes with minimum of our cost, of our transportation cost. So that's why uh, the objective of this problem is to minimize the total cost of transporting the units, but it is very important also to understand in each RLP problem, not only objective function, but also the system of constraint. So when we talk about system of constraint, it is very uh, important that the units Produce it at sources must meet the demands at destinations. So it means that we need to satisfy uh, all our demands from our consumers. And th from the other hand, it means that we need to deliver or total sum of products which we have on our storage on uh, or our warehouses which we use to. Uh, stock our products and then to deliver or transport it to our consumers. So in detail we can say, so we have some product and this uh, product could be located in M numbers, M numbers of suppliers. And we denote each this kind of suppliers by uh, symbol A, big A, AI. So I, it means the number of our suppliers and A, it is, we talk about suppliers and in volumes of A1, A2, AM, small A, what does it mean A1, A2? It is quantity or volume of units which will have each kind of our suppliers. And we need to transport all these volumes of products in quantities of A1, A2, AM from our suppliers to consumers. And we denote our consumers by big B, BJs. So Js, again, it's our number of uh, our consumers and B, it is consumer. And again, we can say that each kind of consumers has some needs. And this needs, it means that we talk about some quantity or some volume of products. And according to each consumers, we talk about little b. We denote this kind of volumes by a symbol small b, b1, b2, bn units. And doing so, the condition of full is fulfilled that in general the available volume of products from suppliers must be equal to the total demand of all our consumers. 
So we talk about equation between volume of products which has uh, which have each kind of suppliers and total demand of all consumers. And of course, we need to know information about costs of transportation. And for this reason, we uh, denote the cost of transportation by using symbols small c, c-i-j. What does it mean, c-i-j? It means from i suppliers to j uh, consumer, we need to make some uh, deliveries or some transportation of goods. And when we talk about um, information about cost of transportation, we can uh, put this information in the form of metrics. So element, uh, each element of matrix C will uh, reflect the information about costs, transform, uh, trans transportation costs from, for example, from the first supplier to the second our uh, consumers. For example, from the second supplier to the first our uh, consumer and it is necessary in the end to determine or to find the plan of transportation in which all products would be taken out of suppliers all and this is very important that all not more not less but all products would be taken out of suppliers then fully satisfied with needs of consumers, not more, not less, but fully satisfied with the needs of consumers. And the, uh, overall, the cost of all transportation would be minimal. So this is our classical formulation of classical transportation problem. And for this reason, to build mathematical model of this economical problem, we need to use uh, table form uh, where we need to put all our necessary information. So what is this table? What uh, kind of uh, the most important element we include into this uh, table? Of course, it is information about our suppliers. So we have um, uh, different kind of suppliers from A1 to A2 to AM and uh, we need to know the total uh, volume of products which um, uh, have uh, each kind of suppliers and this volume we need to put into this uh, place, into this column. So each kind of volume will correspond to this uh, number, with uh, exact number of suppliers. Also, we need to know information about our consumers. And according to each kind of consumer, we need to know information about their needs, which we, they want to get from our suppliers. And uh, we talk about the volume of products, which, for example, uh, needs the first uh, our consumer, it uh, will be equal B1, the volume of products which is needed by uh, second consumers, it will, it, it will be equal uh, B2, and etc. And of course, we need to know information about our costs of transportation. So it is our CIJs, and you can see it into this uh, place. But also, uh, before starting uh, building the mathematical problem of our transportational problem, we need to understand, first of all, uh, what is our decision variable. And our decision variable, we uh, always denote by x, by x in all our LP problems. So x, it is our decision variables. So what is the economical interpretation of our decision variable in transportation problem? X, it is our optimal quantity of products which we need to transportate from supplier to each consumer, from each supplier to each consumers. So we need to define, so we need to find the optimal quantities of all uh, this our axis, x, y, x, j. So this is our decision variable. And that's why following to this kind of information, we can 
uh, set the mathematical uh, view of our transportational problem by using what? First of all, we need to define our objective function. And for this reason, we need to use these formulas. So we talk about objective function. In this case, we will use symbol Z and not F, but Z. Z, it, ours, it, it will be our objective function. And what we need to uh, define by uh, objective function, it is our minim minimum um, sum of transportational costs and how we can define our uh, total sum of transportational costs by multiplication our costs per unit by uh, all quantities of products which uh, we can uh, deliver from each suppliers to each uh, consumers. And of course, we talk about minimization of this objective function. So what we need to define, we need to define multiplication in this objective function between our optimal quantities and our uh, costs of transportation. Then uh, when we talk about mathematical model, we need to um, remember that the second very important element or obligatory uh, element of each kind of LP model, it is system of constraint. So that's why we talk about uh, first constraint and the first constraint based on understanding that we want to deliver all products which uh, each kind of suppliers uh, can transportate to each kind of consumers. So we don't know. Uh, we want to um, transportate uh, all products, not more, not less than we have, but all products. So uh, what does it mean? It means that the sum of products which we will uh, transportate to uh, first consumer, to second consumer, to M consumer should be equal not more, not less, but should be equal the total uh, sum of products which we have. So uh, that's why we talk about equation, the system of constraints which is based on equations between sum um, of products which we need to transport to each kind of consumers and we need to uh, compare it with our uh, total volume of products which uh, have each kind of our supplier. That's why we talk about equation. But from the other hand, we can talk about the second R constraint. And second R constraint based on understanding what want, uh, what um, each kind of consumers want uh, to get from suppliers. So when we talk about the needs of each suppliers, it is our B1, B2, Bn. Uh, what does it mean? It means that each kind of consumer wants uh, that uh, from all suppliers, he gets uh, this uh, sum of products, not more, not less, but equal to the needs of this kind of uh, consumers. So what does it mean? It means, for example, so it means that our first consumer, so B1, uh, wants to get the total volume of products from each supplier. And what does it mean? It means how we can define by math mathematically. We can say that X11, so the quantity uh, of um, products from first supplier, from second supplier, from N suppliers should be equal the total needs of each cost, uh, consumer. So what is, how we can uh, translate it into the mathematical form? We can say that sum by columns of our quantities should be equal. So it uh, can be more or less, no, should be equal to uh, sum of uh, products which need each customer. And that's why we talk about, again, the next our constraint, which is based on equations. And we can um, uh, 
uh, write this kind of concept in short form by using the symbol sum. So sum of x i j must be equal a i. It will talk about from the point of view of uh, supplier. Then uh, x i j should be equal b j. It's from the point of view which based on the uh, um, consumer. And the last are uh, elements uh, in each kind of LP problem uh, must be um, must satisfy the uh, non-negativity of our decision variable. So x i j all our deliveries must be of course uh, be positive because we talk about some uh, quantities of uh, products and. Before we start talking about our practical task into this laboratory work, I want to also notice that uh, when we talk about transportational problem, uh, there are two types of this problem. The first type, uh, it is um, uh, the, uh, the situation when total sum of all our suppliers is equal to total sum of demand from consumers. So all sum, total sum of our suppliers uh, is equal to total volume of products from um, which based on demand from our consumer. It is the first situation. The second type of problem, uh, when uh, this uh, type of condition isn't um, equal to each other. And in our practical tasks today, we will uh, discover uh, the first situation when we talk about that our AI, the sum, total sum of a volume from our suppliers must be, must be equal to B. So B, it is our demand from all our consumers. So we talk about two type of transportation problem and Today, we will uh, discover the first situation when we have this equation. And this type of transportation problem uh, called like a balanced or closed transportation problem when we can satisfy this uh, kind of uh, our uh, condition when some total sum of products from all uh, sub uh, suppliers is equal to total demand of demand from our uh, consumers. So uh, taking into consideration all this theoretical information about our transportation problem, we can go to the practical tasks. So uh, we have some companies, silver sources, which uh, can produce uh, mineral and sweet uh, water in Western region. And every day from the packing area, 20,000 uh, packages are shipped by 12 bottles each. So what does it mean? It means that uh, one packages uh, consists uh, by 12 bottles. And then, from the packing uh, area, the products are sent to warehouses. And our uh, company has two warehouses. And the total capacity of each of these warehouses is equal to 60,000 packages per week. So we have two warehouses, and total capacity of these warehouses is equal to 60. Uh, thousand uh, packages per week. Okay, then um, very important information is about um, who is our uh, consumers. So in this uh, problem, our consumers, it is our intermediaries who uh, will help us to transportate our uh, mineral water and uh, data on the needs of each our intermediaries and also about freight rate or our transportation cost, we can uh, find into this table. So in this table, what we can find? We can find that we have 12 intermediaries or 12 our consumers. We know information about their needs in bottles per week. 
And also, we know the transportation cost from the first warehouse to each consumers and from the second warehouse to each consumers in uh, your per package. And the last information which we need to use, it is um, uh, information about the power of the warehouse. The first warehouse is uh, 300,000 bottles per week and warehouse number two is 420,000 bottles per week. And all this information we need to use to reach the minimum transportation cost with full satisfaction of each our consumers. So, uh, what we need to do next? We need to put all this necessary information into our Excel file. Okay, so uh, what we can, um, we can start uh, filling our, um, no, probably I want to extend it. So uh, first of all, we need to um, fill our primal table. Uh, and into this uh, field, we need to uh, put all our information about what? About two warehouses, about uh, the power, power of uh, producing our uh, mineral water, then about our consumers or our intermediaries. And we have uh, 12 intermediaries. That's why into this kind of cells, we need to put information about their needs. And into this kind of cell, we need to uh, put information about uh, their power. Yes. And uh, in this field, we need to put our information about freight rate or our transportation cost from each our warehouse to each our uh, consumers and then we need uh, after that we need to uh, find optimal solution by uh, using solver and also by using the next our table and into this space we will find our optimal quantities of all our uh, transportations from uh, suppliers, from the second our warehouses to our uh, consumers, to each our consumers. And also uh, we need to uh, do uh, before uh, using solver, uh, the uh, write our um, objective function. So what we need to do first, so what we know, we know that uh, we have the information about the power of warehouse, uh, of the first warehouse, which is equal 300,000 bottles per week, yes? So um, it is information about bottles per week. Uh, needs of each our intermediaries also represented in bottles per week, yes? But when we talk about freight rate, we can say that we talk about packages. So the first rule, which is very important in each RLP uh, problem, it is to um, compare uh, all our units of uh, products. So now we have different units, uh, bottles and packages. So we need to um, make some um, calculations, some operations, which will help us to uh, uh, transform to uh, one uh, measure. First of all, uh, if we have information about uh, our intermediaries and about our warehouses in bottles per week, we can reflect this information in this uh, yellow uh, tables. So uh, we talk about our suppliers and about bottles of week uh, per uh, each our uh, warehouse. So the, for the first warehouse, it is equal 300 thousand bottles yes for the uh, second warehouse it equal what 420 mm -hmm. thousands okay 
and uh, now we can also what to do to uh, put information according to each our intermediaries according to each, uh, each our consumers but also in battles per week so uh, we can uh, do just copy then uh, put in this and what we need to do we can uh, copy transform. and transform yes 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 and we uh, mark it by yellow color because we talk now about our uh, bottles not about packages then how we can transform our bottles into our packages what kind of information can help us to do it divide something yes. by, but something. by what by what Probably. we can read that every day from packing areas the packages are shipped by 20 bottles each so each packages consist 12 bottles so what we need to do if we want to find the packages of uh, first warehouse divided by 12 yes divide by 12 and we uh, need to do it for the next our warehouses so just send and the same what we need to do for our intermediaries for our consumers and we can extend uh, our information in packages for all our consumers. So now we can comparable units for all our information about power of each warehouses and consumers uh, and their needs. And now we can do uh, the same uh, for our freight rate. We need to copy our this kind of information and then we need to put it into this place. Into this. Yes. Okay, so we uh, copy our information about freight rate. And now we just, I will use uh, first uh, variant. So it probably uh we'll need uh, some time you can use it for your variants for example again copy it um, by using values odd and now we can transform because we have some formulas into this massive and that's why we can transform after only when we copy it by values mm, so special it okay so it is all necessary inform but not not all about that uh, we have two warehouse and total capacity of which is equal 60,000 packages per week. So we need to check if is it true or not. How we can check it? We need to find the sum of all our information, yes? Mm -hmm. So what we have? We have that we... Uh, made everything good everything right yes so we have 60 thousand uh, packages per week for all our uh, warehouses of our silver sources and what also we need to check it is about our this MLS about what type of uh, transportation problem we have into this uh, practical tasks so what we have we need to check if all our uh, total uh, power of warehouses is equal to 
total sum of demand from our intermediaries, yes? So how we can check it? So for example, in this, uh, in this space, we can again find the sum and from uh, this uh, from this type yes the sum yes it is equal yes it is equal so we talk about a balanced or closed transportational uh, problem and now we can uh, do some other operations first of all what we need to do we need to define our objective function uh, one minute, please. Good. So, how we can de uh, define our total cost of uh, all transportation, our Z function? How we can do it? By minimization, what kind of multiplication? So, we have information about uh, costs of uh, transportational costs per unit, and now in this, the second hour uh, table, in this space, we will reflect our quantities, so our x's, our x11, x12, 13, 14, etc. So in this space, we will uh, find our quantities of uh, deliveries from suppliers to consumers by using solver. So what we need to do? We need to multiply this massive, yes, our CIJs mm -hmm. by XIJs according to our first formula in uh, word file, SIJ by XIJ. And XIJ we will find by using solver. So we can, use for this reason function in excel praise very good so and we want to multiply this massive so now we have zero of course yes. because we okay. haven't any kind of uh, quantities of our delivery and now I think what we need to do, we need to remind about our system of constraint. So we need to uh, use what uh, the first our uh, constraint by uh, by what by our uh, about our suppliers and about that we want that all kind of our suppliers want to deliver total sum of volume of products which it has. So it means that we put into this cell uh, information, it should be our sum from our axis. So it must be sum of all this. Oh, good. From this kind of um, information and in this for first hour for a house and this is for second warehouse and the same um, we can uh, we need to use for consumers so again after some from this space why because it is our condition our constraint but each kind of consumer want to get uh, the products which will equal to their needs, not more, not less. So, in this case, when we uh, put the right formula, and now we need to use uh, our uh, solver. So, what we want to uh, find? What is our objective function? Of course, our objective function it is sum uh, of transportation cost and we can use this cell for this reason. And we want to minimize this uh, values of the subjective function. Then we need to um, use uh, the right information, the right uh, combination of all our de deliveries from uh, this space into the, the second R table 
good. And by using what kind of uh, constraint? By using that uh, all our um, power should be equal to our real uh, data from uh, the power of each kind of our houses, then uh, the same we uh, need to use for our consumers should be equal to our needs of each consumers according to our inputs and uh, also all our xij so all our quantities of products which will deliver from supplier to consumer must be uh, integer so um, also when we talk about transportation problem you need to uh, remember that uh, this is a type of linear programming problem uh, which we call like integer programming problem why because we can't uh, divide some uh, deliveries by uh, some decimals or fractional part and uh, that's all simplex method yes simplex method We get uh, our uh, minimum of our uh, transportation costs and also we can see the optimal uh, transportation plan, plan where you can see that uh, what kind of uh, products, not, not what kind, uh, what quantity of our products should be uh, delivered by each kind of our warehouses to each our uh, consumers. And again, uh, to check if we uh, did everything right, we can see that our sum of uh, total a volume of our two uh, warehouses is equal the total sum of all needs from our consumers. And now our warehouses will uh, know uh, to uh, what kind of uh, intermediaries they need to deliver their product. So the first one should be uh, transportate uh, its products to the first, second, to the fifth, sixth, uh, eighth, and then um, intermediaries. And also um, we can see the same situation according to the uh, secondary houses. And also we can see that only one intermediaries uh, will get uh, the uh, products from uh, both of our warehouses. Other, all other intermediaries can um, satisfy their needs by using uh, one of our warehouses, but only uh, the eight uh, consumer need to um, use the deliveries from the both of our warehouses. And for this, uh, by according to this uh, optimal plan of deliveries of, or transportations of our products, we can minimize our uh, transportation costs, which will equal 356,750 uh, UR per week.